welcome back to my channel. Uh, another lovely day, uh, Sunday morning, and uh, there's a bit of a breeze blowing. So coming out and doing a bit of flying uh, had to be done. So Josh and I are uh, up here and uh, just brought a few models with us and we're just gonna see what happens. In a bit fast there, I think I'll go around the back. Seems to be the theme for the first though. So. Yeah. <laughs> Let's take it around the back, I think. Ooh. Taking it too far back, maybe. Yeah.
There we go. So you may have seen uh, this model before uh, in one of my previous videos. Uh, it was probably last summer, actually. Um, and this is the FBK signal. Um, and I flew this up at the, the crest. I'd, I'd given it a whole new paint, paint scheme and because uh, it was looking really tatty. It was black before. And uh, I flew it up at the bulk. <coughs> Excuse me. And it just seemed a bit nose heavy. And I had no idea what the C of G was supposed to be. Before I'd stripped the, the old paint off and I'd repainted it, the C of G was, was perfect and it, it flew lovely. But on this occasion, it seemed really nose heavy. I also had a problem on that with the, um, with the elevator. The elevator servo had, had worked loose again. So um, the elevator wasn't working brilliantly. Um, and then on landing, I lost the air and it, dropped and, and uh, put a crack, a slight crack in the glass fiber fuselage. Well, that's all been repaired now. And uh, I went on to RC groups to try and find out what, if anybody knew what the, the C of G uh, was. And uh, a very kind gentleman sent me a manual for it. And it said it was 85 to 90 mil from the leading edge at the wing route. So I, put the model together and tried it. And at those measurements, it was actually tail heavy. So why it felt nose heavy, I really don't know. So anyway, uh, we're back. I've made the repairs. I've moved the battery back a little bit to uh, give it a more rearward C of G, whether that's going to be the right thing to do. I don't know, but we'll soon find out. I'm going to get um, Josh to, um, to throw it off for me and uh, we'll give it a test fly. Right, if you'd like to do the honours. Well, yeah, I guess so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, not pulling out of a dive, so it's not nose heavy. 
just put it into a dive and it, it just keeps going. You've got to you've got to adjust it. So you've got to pull out of the dive. No, if it was tail heavy, it would be tucking under. And it seems to be quite neutral. So look at that, it's just... Find some air there. I'm to um, put some rudder into this. Responsive on the uh, on the roll, for certain. Oh, didn't like that much. Considering we've only got what. 10 mile an hour? Win. Seems pretty well. If you watched last week's video, uh, you'd have seen me having a little bit of a rant about the, the farmer having uh, blocked the, the lay-by where uh, we park on this hill. Um, he'd, he'd, he'd used a digger to, to draw earth up and, and create a bit of a barrier. And, and I said it was probably to stop people from dumping rubbish. Well, you can see the kind of thing we're talking about. You know, it, this, is, this is fly tipping, you know, at its, I nearly said best, fly tipping at its worst, you know, and the farmer has probably got to come along and, and, and clean this up, you know, it just, words fail me, you know, when, when you get stuff like this happening, you know, you've got beautiful scenery, beautiful countryside, you know, and then people come and dump rubbish, and I think I know why they do it, it's because people have got household rubbish that they want to get rid of, and, uh, you know, they have builders in and uh, do the work. They've got rubbish to take away. They don't want to have to pay to take it to the council tip. So what do they do? They chuck it in the van, bring it up to places like this and, and dump it here. And it's absolutely disgraceful, you know. So, yeah, I can really see the farmer. You know, he, he, must, be, he must be... I don't know what words fail me, you know, but he must come up here at times and just think, what, what have I got to do, you know, to, to stop this from happening? You know, because I expect he's complained to the council lots of times and the council probably haven't done anything, you know, but such a shame. So there we go. That's the, the session over. I've left Josh up there. He's still flying, making the most of the weather. The wind has died off a little bit now. Um, it was fine earlier, uh, 12, maybe gusting to probably about 15, something like that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Verso was flying well and the signal flew well. First time I've flown that in, uh, in some time. So um, a little bit of work to do. One of the, one of the flaps has decided it's, it's going to stop working. So I've got to find out why, why that's, uh, 
not happening. Other than that, um, the C of G problem that I experienced the last time I flew it seems to have gone away. It seems to be okay. So um, anyway, it went really well. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it the thumbs up uh, and uh, subscribe to my channel if you ha already haven't done so. It, uh, it helps progress the channel an awful lot. So um, please hit that subscribe button. And um, until the next time, which will be a couple of weeks because I'm going away for, for a weekend. So it'll be a couple of weeks time before I get to go out and do some flying, probably. So maybe about three weeks now till the next video, something like that. Until then, happy flying. <laughs>